I'm really excited, but it hit me. Like, Pastor Mike came up to me and he said, uh, hey, we're going to be out uh, doing a teaching seminar. Would you be willing to, to speak on Wednesday night? And I was like, yes, totally got that. <laughs> and I go home and I tell Justin, I was like, hey, Pastor asked me to speak on Wednesday night. He goes, you said no, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> but what, he, what he's meaning is he would never do anything like that. So if you know anything about Justin, I'm, what you're going to learn tonight, because I'm going to talk a little bit about him, is that he does not really like to speak in front of people. He will sing to you all night, but to speak to you is just not his gift. So I think it's my gift to speak, because I speak all the time. I like to talk. And, uh, but but I, it hit me that the only time I've ever taught, like, done, you know, talked to kids is I've talked to students. I've always been in student ministry. And then, or like women's Bible study. And I've sang to adults. So it kind of hit me. I was like, I've never talked to adults. <laughs> so I'm going to pretend that y'all are all like 13 years old. And y'all will hang with me because my biggest fear is that my ADD is going to kick in. I have ADD. And my ADD is going to kick in. So it's going to be like ping pong. We're going to be all over the place. And it's going to make no sense. It's like my worst fear. So, um, but he asked me if I would talk about worship. And um, so the night, uh, last, night before last, I was uh, reading this book. He handed me, uh, the pastor gave me this book to kind of give me some insight and things to, to go with God's word. And so I was looking at that and I was also on my phone. If you know that recently, uh, I have stepped into a new world of fantasy football and I love it. And I'm actually doing really great, if you want to know. Um, so I was, I read this book and I was thinking about football and so when I went to bed, I had a dream, it's so vivid, I had a dream that I was up here talking and everybody out there was football players and they were rookies and I was asking them, do you know how many uh, fantasy points you put up so I could draft you? And, and then the church caught on fire. And so I, when I woke up, I thought either we're going to cause a revival or I'm going to get struck by lightning. I don't know. I'm a little nervous. So on that note, it would probably be a great idea if we pray first. <laughs> so uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just, I so am thankful for the opportunity to talk about you and your word and who you are and who we are. And Lord, I just pray that this topic of worship will just be more than what they assume worship is and that they will learn so much more from your word and and that they will take this throughout the week and on Sunday have a new uh, expectation for worship. Lord, uh, just give me the words to say and the clarity and I love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so the topic is worship. So when you think of worship, what's the first thing you think of? Singing, right? Every time you say the word worship, you think of singing or you think of singing like you know, with church and like someone speaks, so like the worship service. That's where we place worship. And what is worship? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Giving him glory and adoration and, and all praise to God because he is worthy. And but our perception of worship is a little wrong. And that's what I want to talk about. Is how is it a little wrong? Number one, we always think that worship happens at 1045. So it's like you tell God, hey God, I'll meet you at 1045. It's the only time I got to worship you today. And and then we only think that it applies to music. And so we're going to look in Psalms. So open up your Bibles. I picked Psalms because it generally everybody knows where it is. You just kind of flip it open you're already there. So Psalms 95 is where we're going to start. I should have marked it. I know, y'all all beat me there. <laughs> okay, so it says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God. 
I just want to stop right there. All of Psalms is basically a bunch of praise songs, really, in themselves. But that it's calling us to sing to the Lord and make a joyful noise, which a lot of people joke and say, I can't sing, but I can make a joyful noise. And, and so this is telling us that let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with high praise. The, the thing about worship is, is sometimes we get our minds wrong when we think that when we go to worship, it's to be an escape. To thank God, I'm just going to leave everything outside the church. I'm going to come in. I'm just going to worship you. I need this five minutes of just you and me. And that's wrong. Worship is where, you know, when we're out in the world, we're like soldiers for Christ. We bear the truth, and we're truth bearers for Him. And when we come on Sundays, you probably are broken, beat up. You've tired. You've dealt with family. You've dealt with friends. You've dealt with, you, you have burdens. You have bruises. And so you're a wounded soldier going into worship. And so worship is you going in wounded and bringing all of those, those wounds that you have, but setting them at the feet of Christ and praising him because he is full and worthy of all of our honor and praise. And then he restores you through your worship because you, your whole focus is on him. Your whole focus is on Him because of what He did for you, your salvation. I mean, everything else is frivolous when you think about it. I mean, even your biggest burden of health or your family is nothing compared that you were under the wrath of God and now you aren't because you are saved through Christ. So all of your worship should just be to Him and He's going to restore you so then you can go back out that week as a soldier, but you're, maybe your bruises are not, don't hurt as bad. Because you got to worship the one who can heal that. And so I want, I want you on Sunday when you come into churches to not think about, I'm going to leave everything behind and I'm going to walk in. But think, I'm just going to take everything I am and I'm just going to give it to you and I'm going to worship you because you're worthy of worship. And when we take our, ourselves out of the equation, it makes the biggest difference. You know, if we went around to like what there's like five churches like right here if we went there they would all have different music right we all sing different there's different styles and we've seen that through through generations I mean I have I'm a collector of uh, hymnals I like music makes sense for me to collect hymns um, and so I love hymns. I, you know, name a hymn, I could sing it. Like, I, we play a game, Justin and I, where we go back and forth in the car, like singing hymns and, and things like that. And I love the old hymns. And I also love praise and worship music. And what we've, what we've seen through, you know, these generations of differences is people, and I'm sure you've heard this, you know, I just can't go to that church. I can't stand their music. And that could be either way. It could be, I can't stand that rock and roll. They have lights and everything. It's just all about a concert. That's all they're about is themselves. And, or it's, I can't worship to that old music. Gosh, it sounds terrible. Ugh. But all of that is about is you. When was worship supposed to be about you and you caring? We should be able to worship to anything. And I was really, my eyes were open that when my dad's a youth pastor. He was a pastor now. And, and for four years in my high school, we always went to Rio Bravo, Mexico and went to work at a deaf school. And on one of our trips, we went to a church service in town. And we were riding in town on this bus to get there. And you go through this one part of the city. And it's, you know, it's not super nice, but it's, you know, it's fine. But then we kept going deeper, and and you go over this like like a dam kind of looking thing, and there's no electricity at this in this part, and you're like, okay, so there's not gonna be air conditioning, it's gonna be fine. And then you go further in to where the church is, it's where there's no electricity and there's no water, and the smell was terrible. But there's this one building as a center, center box and like a, just a door. And we went there and we went there for the church service. And the whole thing was in Spanish. But it was the most, I, I can't speak Spanish. Sometimes I think I can. Like today with the cleaning people, I did say, El Ropa, por Nino, clothes for a boy. But I'm not sure if that was even right. But I was really proud of myself. But I don't speak Spanish, all right? I don't speak Spanish. But I want to feel bad. 
And um, but we were there at this church, and all the music was in Spanish, all the preaching was in Spanish. But we just, I could feel the presence of the Lord and the joy in their heart, and. I just knew that I could worship because I knew what they were meaning, even though I, I couldn't understand. And then it really opened my eyes going, oh my gosh, God speaks Spanish. He is way bigger than I could ever imagine. <laughs> you know, like, you know, oh my gosh, he, I bet he speaks Japanese. Like, you know, it's just taking this whole like little American God that you have or the little God that you grew up with and it really puts him on a bigger, bigger scale of who he is and he accepts all worship. and. And it really was in that moment that I thought, there is no magic to worship. It's just giving God the glory that he deserves. Today on uh, Facebook, I don't know if you ever get caught up in videos. Like if you click on a video, then you can watch a video and a video. And a, y'all are all looking at me like, y'all know what I'm talking about, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You all look at the video, 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 and then like two hours later, you're like, well, I should probably put my phone down. So I was doing that, and I came across this pastor, and he's one that actually I like. I like to hear him preach a lot. But he was he was saying the same thing that I know you've heard. Like, when you're going through a trial, you can worship at the beginning, but can you worship in the middle? You know, that kind of like sermon. Can you worship in the middle? And I was like, oh, I've heard that so many times. I'm, you know, that's good. And I thought, wait a minute. We should be worshiping Him no matter the situation because we're worshiping Him because He is a holy and just God despite our questionable situation we're in. Like you have a questionable situation or you want something. Do you see where I'm going? It's about you. It's about you. It's about you. Will you still worship Him? If you're going through this, will you? No. You are called to worship Him because you're the created and you are called to worship the Creator. It doesn't matter your situation. Though your situation can make it difficult, that shouldn't change His holiness and our, our call to worship Him. So, I, you know, the promise, we, we forget who it's for. And um, we don't like particular things. And one thing Pastor Mike kind of said he's, when he was telling me, like, what do you want me to speak on? He was like, you know, talk about you're so good about being expressive and worship. <laughs> and I was like, okay, maybe I'll talk about that. But before I came to this church, my husband and I were at another church called Clay Road. And there was a girl that sang on our team. And for some reason, I've never in my life had someone that like just had it out for me for some random reason. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, like, but she had something. I don't know. And one day she called me after worship, called me after church, and she said, Natalie, I just need you to know something. And I was like, okay. She said, um, there are people at church and people, I just want to let you know this because people are talking and saying that you are too exuberant in your worship and you are not authentic, and people can see right through your worship. Oh, uh, no. uh, you, would, you would think in that moment I would be like, um, girl, you need to check yourself. But I was like, oh my God. I mean, I cried my eyes out. I called Justin. The pastor and his wife had to get involved. We had to have the sit down. You know, what is this about? I mean, it was just an attack. Because I, I grew up in a Baptist church. I remember the specific moment I raised my hands for the first time. It was here, and it was at a youth event. This is as far as I went. But I think for the way you worship, and I know that what Pastor Mike was saying, you know, about just being who you are. I'm an expressive person. I'm talking with my hands now. So it makes a lot of sense for me to worship that way because that's who I am. But I don't want you to think that you have to be like I am to really experience the fullness of God or you're, you're going to really be worshiping Him because like my dad is a really great example. My dad he, I asked, we started talking about, you know, this topic so he could help me. So all this I give glory to, to Jesus and Dad. Um, but he, uh, he was saying when he really worships, he gets silent and he cries. And I've noticed that because a lot of times it would bother Justin and I that my dad would hear us sing or come to our worship and he would just sit. And I'm like, are you... We come out of that grave. Come on, Dad. You, know? <laughs> you come out of that. Dad, get up. And he's just sitting there. And I'm like, everybody's going to think my dad's not saved because he's just sitting there. 
But then when he said that, it made sense to me. My dad's not an eccentric guy. He, li he thinks about things and he sits and ponders on those things. And so even though the person next to you, even though Mary's doing the helicopter in the aisle, that's Mary. <laughs> that's, that's who Mary is. We expect that of Mary. She's like that even when she's not worshiping. So all of our worship is going to look different. But it's that when you worship, you just worship with all that you have. Amen. To give him the glory for all that he has done, despite what's going on in your situation, you keep him the focal point of your worship. And rather that focal point of your worship means you got two hands to the sky, or it means you're just standing there in awe. It doesn't matter. Amen. But that you just worship. And we don't just limit that to, uh, to Sunday mornings. Amen. So now the focus isn't just Sunday morning worship. Well, now what does worship look like throughout the week? Does that mean you listen to KSBJ every single song, you know, and sing a song? No, worship is in what you do. Amen. So my dad said something that, like, I'm like, this is why you're a pastor, because my mind is exploding. But he said something that was so cool. He said, you are a worship leader. And I was like, I know, Dad. I'm a worship leader. He goes, no, 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 no. You are a worship leader. Yeah, you sing. But you're a worship leader because you call others to worship Christ. He goes, that's the same thing as, he goes, um, who's that? What's that guy that your friends, he's like real big muscular? And I said, Ryan? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan and Yvette. And I said, you know her name? You didn't know Ryan's name? <laughs> so I said, Ryan, I noticed every time he came out, he came out with a smile out after church and shook somebody's hand. He said, he's a worship leader. Because he, he, he leads people to worship Christ. And I was like, wow. And he said, what about the greeters at, at the door? And I was like, oh my gosh, Joy! Because she's a worship leader. Amen. Because she leads people to worship Christ. The nursery workers, you help us by not only leading our children to worship Christ, but you're allowing us to worship Christ. Even for that little hour of, of music, but you are leading. So in every aspect of your life, no matter what you do, you should be leading others to worship Christ. You're a worship leader. We just put the stigmatism of worship to music, but that's not where it excludes. That could be maybe where your heart begins, where it opens, but it should be in every aspect of your life. It should be everything that you do, you say and do, and, and to your talents. Like, I sing, clearly, but the, I do that because that's the talent that I feel like God's given me, and I, I want to use it to my best of my ability, and, and that's through leading others to worship Christ. And uh, But then there's Bill who does our soundboard. I don't know if you know who Bill is, but Bill knows things about music, like technical things that make no sense to me. And he gets real excited about certain things that doesn't make any sense to me. But he, that's his passion. And through his passion, he's helping others worship and lead others to Christ. And so sometimes when I hear people talk about, oh, those big churches and all those lighty things, they are just all about themselves. Number one, no. Number two, we are called to give God excellence. Culture changes things. You do things sometimes to be relevant to culture. But why would you exclude somebody who wants to, to minister and has a passion for that? I mean, uh, Charles is so good at stuff like that and, and sound and helping and lights. He knows things like that. Why would he not use his talent in the church to help us? When you take it to that kind of scale, it makes more sense. I mean, there are churches that don't believe in using music um, because they don't want to take the focal point off of God. I understand that. I just think they're going to be sorely disappointed when the trumpet sounds and they're going to be like, what? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I can't focus on Jesus coming in on the horse because of that trumpet, you know. Or, but that would be like that. I just in my heart, I feel like that would be like someone saying, "Kenny, don't use your talent in guitar for the glory of God. Just use it in your home and serenade Brittany." She wouldn't appreciate that. <laughs> but it's using your talent and what that is, and it might not be in music. 
that's okay. God has given us so many talents. But what he wants you to know is that you are a worship leader. Amen. You are called to lead others to worship Christ. And, and one thing I'm really seeing a lot um, uh, recently, I, I heard this pastor say this, and I'm like blown up. I'm get, this whole week, I'm just like, pew, pew. this is so great. He says that everybody is a Christ bearer. Everybody was made in God's image. Everybody bears Christ. That's why a lot of people who have different beliefs in you, maybe who deny God or whatever, they suppress the truth, like a, like one of those you know games you know that keeps popping up, and they suppress that truth and they suppress that truth because they, like, why do they feel bad you know for certain things? They have no morality, they have no standard because they believe no God, but they have the image of God on them because they were made in God's image, and so that's why it's important for us to go out into this world and to spread that truth and to lead people to worship Christ because they do have that truth. They do have that and they know it, they just suppress it. And it's your job to bring that out and lead them. And when you lead them and then you bring them to a gathering of Christians so we can love on them, so we can show them how to worship, so we can show them God's truth and what it, what it means uh, to worship Him fully. I, I love that, um, that in music it's changed, but it's really the same. So I'm gonna, I told him I wasn't gonna do it, but I'm at the podium, I can do whatever I want to. <laughs> Justin, come on down. You're the next contestant on Natalie's show. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna go back to music, all right? I'm gonna open this up. This is a <coughs> this is a good old Baptist hymn. Can you sing this hymn? Which one? This one? Oh, either one. Jesus keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain free to all a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my ransomed soul shall find rest beyond the Tell me, could you not worship to a song like that? Now, sing a contemporary song. Which one? I don't know any. I don't care if it's what. <laughs> it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. I could worship to that too. See, thank you, Justin. I'll be here all week. change I mean I, you know I, I don't know if you've even heard this like the amazing grace and some of the old hymns were even written to some bar tunes because people knew them and they were easily to catch on the the tune of the song the, things change meanings change styles change what doesn't change is that God calls us to give him glory that won't change 
when you walk into a sermon and, and, and taking it outside of music and saying, when you leave like church and you say, you know, I didn't, I didn't get anything out of that message today, really. Um, did you read the Bible? Because I'm pretty sure something in there was for you. And, and it's so easy for us to put it back on us when it's all about him. We, we just happen to get, you know, in his grace but it's all about worshiping him. I want to go back to this uh, ver- uh, 95 in Psalms. And it says, um, down to verse 6, O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, and he is the sheep of his hand, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. You know, you would think, I am not Ray, I am not the pastor, I am a history major, but I cannot say historical words, so bear with me. Um, Y'all all all see it, it's in your Bible too. As on the day of Mesa, in the wilderness, when your fathers put me to to the test and put put me to the proof, though they had had seen my work. So I love that the first verse, and, and. Verse 6, it says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord. You know, every time that uh, we see uh, one of the prophets in the presence of God, like, they are, like, unmoved. Like, they can't even grasp themselves. They fall down in worship. They, they can't even, like, contain uh, the glory that, that God is. And, you know, we ask, for God's presence we ask for God to like you know come and be a part of this worship service today but can you imagine what it would be like if his glory was really here we'd all be falling on our faces and for him and and that is what I want us to, to challenge us to remember that he is so glorious that he deserves every ounce of praise even to songs that we don't understand or make sense just sing it knowing that he is worthy of worship and that he's worthy of your worship oh come at the beginning it says oh come i love how god is drawing us in every time i love how the verse always starts with oh come even in the scripture in the new testament when he says you know let the children come to me my favorite um worship song that I have written on the list of sing yet it hasn't been sung is uh, the song called Come to Me it says come, how's it go? I have to think about how to sing it Come to me I'm all you need Can you hear him saying come to me I'm your everything I love that, that voice that he's saying come he's drawing his children in And so when we're there, you know, it's like sitting at your father's feet. And you I don't know if you ever had this as a child and it may be different for each person's childhood. So it might not be a father figure, but someone you really adored. I remember when I was a little girl um, sitting in my grandfather's lap and there's a video of him singing to me and he's at. singing a little song and I look up at him and I just smile and he just smiles at me and he cries and it's a picture because I just adored him I loved him and I think that's the same image you need to have on Sundays when you come and you worship that you just love him and you just adore him and you're just proud to be in his presence with your your family in Christ and then after you've worshipped him and adored him, then you figure out how can I use my talents that God has given me to lead others to worship Christ. And that's when you fall on your face and you ask him, how am I, little old me, who has no ability to sing or whatever you feel like you are are limitless in, that you fall down and you ask him, Lord, all I want to do is worship you and I'm told that I need to lead others to worship you what does that look like and I promise you in the weeks to come God will reveal things he'll you know a talent that you may have and he'll say I want you to do it for this ministry or maybe you have something to give in your community or church 
There might be a talent that you have that our church needs. That there, there's something there. I really feel in my heart that there, that we limit ourselves because of our insecurities. <coughs> That's why we limit our worship because of our in, insecurities, and we don't just worship Him because He's holy. I want to take you back again to that that thing that that pastor said. Will you worship Him at the beginning of your trial? Do you worship Him in the middle of your trial? Do you worship Him when He gives you the answer? How about you throw all that away and worship Him because He's holy, because He saved you from your sin? How about you forget about your little dinky trial? They're going to happen day and night all the time. That ain't going to end. But God being holy and righteous is always and never changing. That's what's worthy of your worship. And and how you, you know, I oh come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Thankful. Woo! Let us let's read that again. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. How many times you come to worship and you've been like, there's so much going on today. Yes, um, I gotta be doing this. I gotta get out of here. I gotta make a lasagna. I don't have time for this. And you don't come in there thankful for all that God has given. It's so easy for us to forget about all the great things that God that we should be thankful for. It's kind of easy to remember some of those small things if you just turn on the TV and see what's happening in the world around us and you're going to sleep in your own bed tonight. Then you can kind of remember, maybe I should go and be thankful right now. You know, instead of waiting till Sunday to come in and be thankful in His presence, He is omnipresent. He's with you all the time. You can be thankful all the time. That And that attitude and that gratitude that you have is contagious. And then people are going to be questioning you because your spirit is up and you're thankful for the smallest things. I mean, if someone handed you something, you know, ridiculous, and you're like, thank you, man, thank you. God is good. And I'm like, what is going on with you? And then you get to lead them to worship Christ. Then you were a worship leader that day. That's what I want you to do. I want you all to be to feel his presence and to come to him, to adore him and forget about yourself. Whether you forget about, you know, the style of music or how you worship, let that go. I mean, I know sometimes the pastor can be crazy and be like, everybody put your hands up. I know that could be real awkward for certain people. If me and Justin were out in the audience, and the pastor on stage, and I'm not saying our pastor, any pastor, we were at some kind of thing. And they were like, everybody put your hands up, we're gonna worship him today. That guy back there would be like this. <laughs> that's not who he is. Amen. And that's okay. On the other hand, I'm like, Whoop! all the way to the sky. <laughs> Take me up. <laughs> you know, like, that's that's who I am. And so on Sunday, when you're there, I just want you to be who you are and know that God wants you to be who he created you to be. He knows if you were up there, out there doing helicopters with Mary next week, he would know you are not being the authentic you he created you to be. He'd probably be standing there going like this. What are you doing? <laughs> I mean, I wanted you to worship me, but you're taking Natalie's talk a little too far. I mean, he wants you to come who you are. Your true worship, whether that's like my dad that just sits in silence and is in awe, or it's like me who can't keep my foot from stomping on stage. It doesn't matter, but that you lead others to worship him. That's what matters. So I, I, my prayer for you this week is that, number one, you know it's not about music. We tend to always think music, but it's not about music. It's about you leading others to worship Christ. And number two, that you don't worry about how you worship. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you give Him the honor and glory. That's what matters. And number three, I want you to find out how are you going to use your talents that God has individually given you, uniquely given you, to lead others to worship Christ. It doesn't mean in song. It just means them coming into relationship with Christ and then they'll worship the Lord because they'll see that 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 he has saved them from their from their sin and they are covered from the wrath of God because of the atonement. I just want us to to worship him 
because he's worthy of worship. Not because it's something we feel like we have to do every Sunday at 1045 on the dot on stage, let's sing, let's go. No, and that we listen to the Holy Spirit. One of my favorite things about the church is that you never can tell how many songs we're gonna keep going. The pastor will just come up, we'll sing another one again, we'll do this again. Because you have to listen to what God is calling, not what we're calling. Not the grumbling in our stomachs because it's 12 o'clock at some Wrap it up. <laughs> no, but that we listen to God's call because when you think about it, we're selfish and we only give him till max one o'clock on Sunday and that's enough. Do you know what I'm saying? We're so selfish. We're so sinful. So on Sunday, I want you to have a new mind. And this week from Wednesday to Sunday, I want you to pray how God wants you to use your talent the talent that God's given you, a passion that God's given you, to use that to lead others to worship Christ. I want you to think about that. And on Sunday, and if it hasn't rang to you what it's supposed to be, then get on your knees on Sunday morning and worship Him. Just worship Him and worship Him because He's worthy and He's righteous and worship Him. And He will open your heart to that. I I just pray, my prayer for you is, is that this becomes more than just a song. It becomes a life, a lifestyle of worshiping Him for all He's done and everything that you say and do. And so um, I want us to sing a song together. <laughs> Justin, come on down! I'm not kidding. You're the worship pastor. Come on down. <laughs> I listen. Now, after after we sing, as I said, uh, we're going to be probably a little early. So we're going to um, open up our Bibles. We're going to take lots of pictures. We're going to post it on Facebook and say we're going to be here all night, Pastor. We're in deep Bible study. Okay? That's what we're going to do. I've got a Facebook Live. Ah! No. What do we he, do? Now he knows our secret. We're going to we're going to sing a song. Okay. What song would you like to sing? Oh, I don't know. You're you're doing a great job leading this all in the worship. But... You're the worship pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's sing one that everybody needs without all the words. What do you think? How about... Oh, great is our God. That's a good one. And if Chris didn't write that one, I was going to. So, <laughs> just put it out there. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Let's sing it again, how great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Lord, thank you so much for saving us. Lord, thank you so much for the love that you give us. Lord, thank you for the guidance and the direction that you give us in our lives, even when we feel confused. Lord, I pray that on Sunday, from now until Sunday, that, that you will make us more aware of the opportunities we have to lead others in worship. Lord, I pray on Sunday it'll be just an explosion, a revival of hearts because we're stripping away the selfishness of it being about us and focusing all on it being about you. Thank you, Lord, for everything you do. I pray this week will be an incredible week of worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.